Ladies and gentlemen, students, faculty, and associates, thank you for your time and attention to this presentation on Composing for the New Era, Privacy in the Metaverse, sponsored by the European Law Student Association. My online name is Sightarm, and my offline name is James, and this presentation will give operational definitions of the metaverse and privacy in the metaverse with examples. Today I will cover what is the metaverse, what is privacy in the metaverse, the importance of operational definitions, and who is creating the universe, you. What is the metaverse? The metaverse is a persistent online digital environment with instant two-way co-creative multi-user access. What does that mean? We are in a metaverse right now. If you know how, Please type yes in Zoom chat if you can hear me. I'm going to look at chat. If you can hear me, please type yes in Zoom chat. And I see a bunch of yeses already. Thank you, Sada. Thank you, Urson. That is an example of instant two-way multiple user access. The metaverse exists above our everyday physical universe. Meta is Greek for above. Verse is short for universe, which means the one world. Metaverse is above our physical universe. It is delivered wirelessly by radio and using wires by cable. The top picture here on your slide shows Earth's submarine fiber optic cable network, which connects all the continents of the world by transoceanic wires. There are so many cables that they look like thick outlines circling the land masses and crossing between them on the bottom of the ocean. We are already living in the metaverse. Every time we use an internet app like Zoom, we are in the metaverse. The bottom picture shows the leading social network apps in Turkey in late 2019. Heading the list are YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter. If you use any of those apps, please type the letter yes or type a yes. I'll check in chat here. If you use any of those apps, now all of you are using Zoom, so I should see at least one yes. There you go. Thank you. Next, if you understand so far what I'm saying, that you are already living in the metaverse, please type the letter M. Type an M for metaverse. If you understand, you're already in the metaverse. If you don't understand that, you're not sure, type a question mark. Let me see what you say. M, M, M. Very good. Oh, come on, somebody should type a question mark. All right, very good. Thank you, uh, Sebahat.
And I apologize in advance. My Turkish is very poor. I can pronounce two letters correctly. What is privacy in the metaverse? The top picture shows Samuel Warren and Louis Brandeis, who wrote The Right to Privacy in 1890, which was, in the United States, the first definition of priority, privacy. In the metaverse, as consumers, we want to create content, like we made these slides for you. We want to share the content, like Zoom. But we also want to control the content so that invitees to ELSA can see it, but not all the other 8 billion people of the world. As consumers of the content, we want to see. We want to see the slides from Dr. Gomez and Lynn Barrett. We want to respond the way that you responded in chat. But we also, as Lynn said, we want to avoid unwanted content. We don't want trolls trying to hassle us uh, when we are sharing with each other. In the metaverse, privacy applies to three things, identity, property, and access. The importance of operational definitions. The top picture shows W. Edwards Deming, who defined operational definition as a procedure that is agreed upon to translate a concept into a measurement. Dr. Deming had helped Japan revolutionize their auto manufacturing industry by translating the concept of quality into specific measurement procedures to track improvement. The results were commercially outstanding, and it did not take long for the United States automobile industry to adopt their own operational definitions of quality. What is the metaverse? What is privacy in the metaverse? These are concepts that are not usable until they are expressed as measurement procedures that produce results we can track. Deming also said that you can use more than one operational definition. If you use different operational definitions, you get a different answer. The issue is not using more than one. The issue is to be sure you are agreeing on which one you are using right now. What does this mean for the metaverse and privacy in the metaverse? It means that for each different metaverse application that you use, Second Life, Zoom, Instagram, YouTube, the operational definition may change. What is identity in the metaverse? Neil Stevenson defined metaverse and avatar in his 1992 novel Snow Crash. He said that a metaverse is a computer-generated universe. He said that an avatar is an audio-visual body that people use to communicate with each other. He said that the metaverse would operate on fiber optic cable. In the metaverse, your identity is your avatar. Your identity options for your avatar are a function of each app and platform. The top picture shows my online avatar in 
sidearm in Second Life, and it is three-dimensional. The bottom right picture shows Val Librarian, the avatar with blonde hair and a blue shirt, and sidearm me again on the right with purple and yellow hair and dark skin. You will be hearing from Val Librarian shortly. But this is how we look in Alt Space VR. The middle picture on the left is my online avatar in YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google Docs. The bottom picture is my offline avatar, James G. Neville, on Facebook. Both of these avatars are two-dimensional. Some systems allow movable avatars. Some do not. Some systems allow you to customize your avatar. Some systems make you use a generic cookie cutter. Each app that you use has its own operational definition of identity. What is content in the metaverse? In the metaverse, your intellectual property is your content. Content options, again, are a function of which app and platform you use. The top picture here is Google Docs, where my avatar, Sidearm, and another avatar are working on a report together. And they're talking back and forth in chat, just like we are talking back and forth in chat in Zoom at the same time. This report is an example of intellectual property expressed as text and narrative. You cannot copyright an idea. You can only copyright something that is expressed in a media or physical format. The bottom picture shows images, 3D models, animations, although they're not moving in the world they're moving, and sound, which you can hear in there, in Sign Space, which is another Metaverse app. These 15 blue buttons are 15 different dances that you can click and play. These 12 avatars are completely different and how they are customized, what they're wearing, what they look like. Now, Google Docs cannot offer you models and dances, but ScienceSpace cannot offer collaborative report writing. Each of these apps has its own options, strengths, and uses. Each app has its own operational definition of content. What is access in the metaverse? In the metaverse, two-way permissions are your access. Iki Yunlu Izin Control You. Two-way permissions. One set of permissions is for the producer of the content, and the other set of permissions is for the user of the content. If you have ever posted a picture online anywhere, please type a P in chat. If you've ever posted a picture, type a P in chat. There's one. Deedam, thank you. Mirant, thank you. Bad, bad Goblin, hello, Bad. Appel. There you go. If you have ever looked at a picture online as a user, please type the letter U. If you've ever looked at a picture online, type a U in chat. Deborah, thank you. Didum, thank you. Eric Moore, thank you. Welcome, Eric. Sadat. That is you being a content creator 
and a content user. You are both. Thank you. The top picture here shows access permissions being set for 3D models, 2D images, and programming scripts created in Second Life, which we've heard about from Lynn and Dr. Gomez, which is another Metaverse app. To make the avatar down here, you have to have a 3D model, plus a 2D image for a body map, plus an animation and a programming script that allows the avatar to move around at your command. All of these components can be individually controlled for access and use by others. The bottom picture shows access permissions being set on a YouTube video. You can list your video as private, only you can see it. Unlisted, if you send me the URL, I can see it, but I can't find it on Google. Or public, so anybody can find it and it'll start to show up in search engines. You can also turn off comments if you don't want people hassling you about what you posted. So you're controlling how people can respond to you. These two apps each have their own operational definition of access. Who is creating the metaverse? You are. We are living in the metaverse every time we go online. The metaverse is our shared digital world riding above our shared physical world. Next time you go for a walk or a drive, look up and see the radio towers, the cell towers, the microwave towers that connect your cell phones and Wi-Fi devices to each other. Then think of all those transoceanic cables connecting our continents so that your media posts can reach me and my media post can reach you. In the metaverse, your identity, content, and access depend on the digital apps and platforms you use. No single company owns the metaverse. Not Facebook, not Google, not Microsoft, not Amazon. No country owns Facebook, not the United States, not the European Union, not China, not Russia. The top picture shows icons for over 150 platforms that are already in active use. And while society and law can seek to protect our digital privacy, the many different international policies make things complicated. The bottom picture shows a privacypolicies.com post that covers six separate global privacy laws in the United States, Europe, and Canada. As consumers and producers, of the metaverse, our best defense is to be aware of the capabilities and the limits and the options of the apps and platforms that we use. So my first key message is, welcome to the metaverse. You are already here. The two columns on this slide show a selected timeline of the metaverse and privacy in the metaverse. Samuel Warren and Louis Brandeis of the Harvard Law Review are shown at the top left, giving the first operational definition of privacy. Hero protagonist, yes, that is his name, Hero, 
of snow crash is shown middle, giving the first operational definition of avatar and metaverse. Scott Stein of CNET and Luca Gravitcher of Reddit are shown bottom right in 2021, giving current operational definitions of the metaverse, although we did not cover their material in this presentation. From 1992 to 2021, it has taken 30 years for metaverse to become a media buzzword. Yet, yet, the first internet browser went live in 1993, one year after Snow Crash. We have been living in the metaverse all along. We just didn't know it until now.